let's switch and just sort of make sure we know what drugs we're talking about. And I'm going to run through the names of the drugs real quickly, but you ought to know what drugs are in what place. So tell me the main drug classes. You guys are probably familiar with this, but the, the big class of drugs. So opiates. Opiates are the painkillers. So I'm going to tell you a bunch of names. And of course, there's generic names, and then there's brand names. And I'll try and do justice to the to both. So the strongest opiate is heroin. It's only available synthetically on the street. Uh, there's no pharmaceutical grade heroin, although in Europe, heroin is a treatment of choice for opiate addiction. Heroin is the treatment of choice to maintain people for opiate addiction. In our country, we're not there yet, but we use methadone and we use buprenorphine, suboxone. So those are the most potent drugs. Opium is also potent. It's, it's only available from the poppy uh, synthesized. Then comes this whole array of synthetic drugs that were created by the pharmaceutical industry, the strongest of which is fentanyl. Now, if you're old enough to remember, fentanyl used to be used only in surgery. It was a drug of choice of anesthesiologists for a long time. But it wasn't available to people on the street until the pharmaceutical industry sat around and said, well, here's the market for, for you know, surgery. There's 85 billion, people, uh, 85 billion people with chronic pain, you know, quite a market. So they created patches, duragesic. They created Actique, which are suckers. They created uh, another uh, suckable form of, of the drug. And we now have fentanyl readily available on the street for people to use and abuse. Very potent, potent drug, very hard to come off of. Uh, the other thing the pharmaceutical industry did, by the way, is they said, here's the way to treat chronic pain. We want to give them a long-acting drug so that there's not peaks and valleys and they don't have to get extra doses. But there are some people where that's not going to work so well. We have short-acting drugs on top of that for breakthrough pain. So we have OxyContin and fentanyl patches, which are long-acting. That's oxycodone that's <coughs> slowly dissolved. And then for the breakthrough, we give you Percodan. So we're now having people who are taking 30 to 60 OxyContin twice a day with 120 Oxycodone a day, which is the short acting version. Percocet, Tylox, uh, Percodan, uh, Roxacet, you guys know Roxacet? That's our drug of choice in, in, in Las Vegas. Because uh, Oxycontin, you know the story about Oxycontin. Oxycontin made by Purdue, you saw the figures. They, they actually, the, the CEO of uh, Purdue went to jail because they really misrepresented what they were doing and, and they were fined out a lot of money. Because they said this tablet is, is slow release, it's not abusable. Well, try putting your foot on it, <laughs> or taking a hammer and crushing it and then snorting it, or dissolving it and injecting it. And they knew that that could be done, and that's what was done. I mean, OxyContin was really the cusp of the, the epidemic for a long time. Well, now they changed OxyContin under law. There's a strategy that the government said you have to do to make this safer. And now you can't crush it. If you crush it, it turns into a gooey gel which I thought was kind of silly, but it turns out from my kids who I'm now treating, they say you can't abuse it, you can't snort it, you can't shoot it up, you can't even microwave to dry it out because I've tried it. So they're using Roxycodone, Roxacet, which is uh, a little different, but, but that's the drug of choice, Roxy's, that's the, that's the sort of drug on the street. Hydrocodone is Lortab, uh, Norco, Vicodin, Vicoprofen, number one prescription in the bag, according to the pharmacy tracking system. Now, that I'm talking about more than penicillin. Number one prescribed drug in the state of Nevada. We're number four in the nation for the frequency. We're number one for Percocet. And then the second drug, well, I'll get to the second drug. Uh, codeine is an opiate. Tramadol, Ultram, Ultraset, have you heard of that? It appears to be much safer than opiates because it's not chemically an opiate. It's the same thing. It's the opiate receptor. It's not safe. People who have the disease of addiction can't take it safely. So, and it's a good painkiller if you don't have addiction, by the way. All these drugs are good painkillers. All these drugs are great for acute pain, which means time limited, the, the tissue heals. But for chronic pain, they're quite terrible. So that's the opiates. Um, next class of drugs. Stimulants. Stimulants. Easier class. Stimulants, speed, and cocaine. So meth, legal form of amphetamine is what? Adderall. ADHD drug. 
methylphenidate, Ritalin. Long-acting amphetamine, Focalin. Long-acting Ritalin, Conserva. All stimulants. All do the same thing because the brain they can't tell who's prescribing it. And you probably know on college campuses that's the number one drug for performance. Take a couple of Ritalin and take a test. Um, the other stimulant that we really should be concerned about is nicotine. What? Nicotine. In tobacco. Uh, and caffeine's a stimulant, but it's a mild stimulant. So even though you have tolerance and physical dependence, most people aren't going to jail for driving under the influence of caffeine. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> next class of drugs, I'll put it up. It's the cannabinoids, marijuana hashish. You've already spent a little time on that. And the last main class of drugs are the sedative hypnotics. And sedative hypnotics start with the oldest sedative hypnotic, which is alcohol. Alcohol is a depressant. Um, and the key word is depressant. You know, people drink to feel better, but it really brings their nervous system down, suppresses respiration, and causes depressed mood. The older pill form of sedative hypnotics are the barbiturates. Anything with an A, alfetobarbital, nembutal, second law, if you're old enough to have read Valley of the Dolls by Jacqueline Suzanne the reds, the blues, the greens. But remember I mentioned Fioranol when I talked about Jack at the beginning? Fioranol is a headache pill, readily prescribed for headaches, but it's a barbiturate. Fioracet has Tylenol on it. Um, and then there's my least favorite drug. Here's the take home of the day. Carazopridol, Soma, is a sedative drug. It turns into meprobamate, an old-fashioned anti-anxiety drug used in Equinol and Milltown that my mom used to take for anxiety. Soma is the third most commonly prescribed drug in the state of Nevada. Soma coma. <laughs> Lori Tab Soma is a Las Vegas cocktail. And can, can I share what happened? That Laura's mom is uh, over 90, went to an emergency room with muscle spasm, and they gave her I don't know how many Soma, and she almost fell down and, and hurt herself. So Soma should not be on the market. It's not on the market in Europe. They've taken it off. In the United States, for some unknown reason, it's unscheduled. So Soma is a sedative medication, very habit forming, very, very, very unsafe drug. And often used in combination with the opiates. And then the last group of, of sedatives, anybody know? Benzodiazepines. Valium, Xanax, Librium, uh, Tranxine, Lorazepam, which is a, a Ativan, Oxazepam, Cerex. And then we have this whole new class of drugs that are non-benzodiazepine sleeping pills, and but Ambien, Sonata, and Lunesta. Doesn't it just make you wanna? I mean, look at how they market it. And you all know Ambien uh, causes uh, amnestic episodes, and so do these other two. So people are driving and eating under the influence and crashing their cars, and, and people see them in their car. So. Unsafe drugs. Now, all these drugs have indications. If you read in the, in the PDR, there's short-term use for sleep, for anxiety, for pain. None of these drugs are indicated for long-term use of pain, except opioids for chronic not cancer pain. We're, we're trying to change that. So those are the classes of drugs that we have to be concerned about. There's others. There's this new wave of bath salts and salvia, artificial marijuana. You guys in law enforcement, I'm sure you're seeing a lot of that on the streets. Bath salt stimulant. Very bad, very dangerous. And salvia is really, it's a, it's a plant that's very much like the cannabinoids. It hits the endocannabinoid system. And the problem with salvia is, it's, it's as I understand it, they put the chemical into a batch of smokable materials, tobacco, and there's a lot of variation in the batch. So people are overdosing and ending up in emergency rooms from the bedside. 